What's up everyone? K Rugs here. Me and Morgan. This is Morgan Girl. Uh, what I want to do is talk to everybody about my past dealing with addiction and uh, my, pe my present now dealing with recovery. And I know there's a bunch of different rehabs and, and different clinics out there. People have different cures and treatments and programs and all of them are great. Some of them aren't so good, but what I've done is went to a bunch of different programs and I've tried to take the best pieces out of each and also and add my own unique perspective, put it together and hopefully I can help some other people out there, you know, get clean as well. I am an ex-addict, specifically heroin. And I know right now the heroin in this country, the problem is absolutely crazy throughout the whole world actually. So hopefully this can benefit some other people. And uh, throughout the series, uh, pretty much gonna explain to everybody my past lifestyle throughout drugs. You know, all the consequences that happen with drugs. Everything from loss of jobs, family issues, relationship issues, and eventually a uh, loss of freedom. And then how I did become, you know, seek out recovery and get sober. And it has been 199 days straight now I've been sober, so I'm really proud of that. And every day just keep pushing forward and moving on. Now let me introduce you to my sidekick here. This is Morgan. Morgan is the first dog that I've ever had myself. I got Morgan in 2008 from the Rochester Pound. And Morgan is the best, the specialist, most special dog in the world to me right now. She, you know, as I said, was my first dog. We've had family dogs in the past, but Morgan, you know, I got myself to live with me wherever I went. I remember the day I went to the pound with my father to look for dogs. The first eight or nine cages, there's dogs jumping up everywhere, barking, two, three dogs in a cage going crazy, and they're all great, and I wanted to bring them all home. But in the last cage, one dog sitting in the middle of the cage by herself, not barking, not jumping, just sitting there quietly. And it was Morgan. And I asked the lady if I could, you know, have a visit with her. She opened the cage. Morgan dropped right at my feet, paws up in the air, and gave me the universal doggy sign for a belly rub. So right there, I knew I wanted to take her home. After about two weeks waiting, you know, I was able to bring Morgan home finally, and I was so happy. She was, we don't know what happened in her past. Uh, clearly, she had some issues, specifically with men. For the first about two years or so, <clears throat> excuse me, she was very skittish around men, strange men, you know, everyone with the exception of, you know, the men she lived with, but uh, she's never aggressive, just real scared. Slowly she got better and better, but she was always very friendly, very happy dog, never aggressive at all. I was able to bring her to school with me. She lived at me in college for two years, and at college she would follow me around. I'd walk around campus, go to parties. Morgan would be right there behind me. No leash or nothing, always following. Everybody loved her. She was the, the talk of the campus. <clears throat> then I was able to bring Morgan home, and uh, she's been with the family you know, ever since. Morgan has been with me through some real good times and some real bad times. <clears throat> what I really love about dogs is how they can read and adapt to your mood. When I was at school and I was really getting into the beginning of my addiction with painkillers, which stems from a football injury, you know, I'd be sick. I'd wake up days and I'd be sick. I didn't have any painkillers left. I'd be in physical pain withdrawing. Morgan would jump up on the bed with me, hop right between my stomach and just cuddle up with me. She knew I was feeling sick. She knew I didn't feel good. And she came right there and she was there for me by my side. Then after a nice long nap, she'd always wake me up, lick my face. And she'd pretty much tell me, listen, Get your lazy ass up, let's go, you know? So they can really adapt and read to your mood and they're always just there with unconditional love and that's what I love so much about dogs. Uh, Morgan is right now 13 years old, 13 maybe even 14. When we got her she was three or four, we didn't know specifically, we didn't have much background info on her. She is a Roddy mix, Roddy, Black Lab, bunch of other stuff we don't really know. She's got the Roddy colors as you can see. Uh, one thing she has, she's got her tail, signature tail. Most Rotties don't have a tail. And uh, now I can kind of understand why, because when she gets happy or excited, her tail goes crazy and knocks everything over. You can always hear her tail smashing the floor. So that's Morgan's signature right there. Uh, she is getting to be, you know, a little bit older girl, a little bit of arthritis right now. She had a little bit of cancerous 
you know, tumor type thing on her leg we had to get rid of, but we were able to get rid of that, so she's doing pretty good, and, uh, you know, we're hoping she can hang on for a couple more years for us, because she's just the best dog. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about is everybody who is an addict and anyone who's dealt with addiction very closely knows no addict is going to get clean or seek recovery until they want to and they are ready. No friend, no family member, no addiction specialist, no counselor can talk somebody into seeking help until they're ready. I know people that have gone to 10, 11, 12 rehabs, prison four or five times, and all of a sudden one day they just quit. Not at rehab, not here, and it was because they finally decided they were ready. Other people, it might be their first time. They just decide first rehab they're ready. But in the end, that person has to be ready. And one thing that's very important, especially with heroin addicts, is when you're using the drug, you are filling your brain with these extremely powerful chemicals day in and day out, multiple times a day. You're putting heroin in your system, which is just pumping your brain with an excess of these feel-good chemicals. So you feel great. That's the high you're chasing, of course. Now, when you get sober, your body's used to that high. Your brain, that unbelievable excessive amount every day you were filling it with, now you have none. So naturally, there's a lot of depression and anxiety and a void that comes with being, you know, newly sober. A lot of meds can help with that, and, uh, you know, if that works, great, and I encourage people, you know, talk to your doctor about that if that's what can work. But I think every addict needs to find that one thing, that passion that gets them up in the morning, that passion they just absolutely love to help fill that void. For me, that's animals, specifically dogs. Uh, when I see Morgan, when I see Gemma, our other dog at home, and I walk in the door and that tail's just going crazy, every time you walk in the door, it could be 10 times a day, one time, they are always happy to see you, unconditional love. That's what I love. Uh, I had a doctor recently ask me what the best anxiety and, and depression that I've ever taken is, relax, Morgan. And I've tried quite a few, and I told them very easily, the answer is my dog. Absolute best medicine for me for anxiety and depression. And I encourage everyone out there, whether you're newly sober, sit down, Morgan. Whether you're newly sober or you're looking to get sober, find that passion, whether it's family, kids, uh, God, whatever it may be. Find that thing you absolutely love to help fill that void you have in your brain when you are newly, you know, in, in new recovery. And uh, that is the end of this video for today. I encourage everyone to join me again. This is my first video, so uh, you know I'm trying to work on everything and, and get all the uh, technical aspects down. I'll be putting another video on with a new four-legged friend that's going to visit me. And uh, also, just got to throw my disclaimer in there. Of course, these are uh, all my own opinions. I will be throwing you know facts in this series. Um, stuff I read online, different studies, but again, I am no doctor, I'm not an addiction specialist, so this is all my own personal opinions, but I do encourage people to uh, take some of this advice, whether, you know, it's an addiction with drugs, a work addiction, a sex addiction, whatever it is, or maybe just to better your life in general. All right, everyone, I'm out. Join us again later.